Matter is made of these tiny particles called atoms. Within each atom, there are even smaller particles called subatomic particles. This includes the protons and neutrons of the atomic nucleus, surrounded by rapidly moving electrons. Each proton carries a charge of plus one, while each electron carries a charge of minus one. For a neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. While protons tend to stay put within the atomic nucleus, the outermost electrons have a tendency to come and go. Consider a neutral sodium atom, which has 11 protons in the nucleus surrounded by 11 electrons. Consider also a neutral chlorine atom, which has 17 protons and 17 electrons. Watch what happens when the sodium atom loses an electron to the chlorine atom. The sodium now has 11 protons, but only 10 electrons. We call this the sodium ion. Because it has one more proton than electrons, it has a net charge of plus one. The chlorine, by contrast, now has 17 protons, but 18 electrons. We call this the chloride ion. Because it has one more electron than protons, it has a net charge of minus one. From chemistry, we learn that sodium and chloride ions join together to form a material we know as sodium chloride, also known as table salt. Regarding the physics, it's important to point out that upon the formation of sodium chloride, there is a conservation of charge, which means that the total net charge always remains the same. Electrons can move about to create regions where there is a buildup of negative charge while leaving behind a region of positive charge, yes, but the total amount of charge always remains the same. We call this the conservation of charge, which is a fundamental principle in physics, much like the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. Rub a plastic rod with some fur. This causes electrons to be transferred from the fur to the rod, which gives the rod a net negative charge. If the rod is now negatively charged, what about the fur? That's right. The fur now carries a net positive charge. But is the degree of the negative charge on the rod exactly equal and opposite to the positive charge on the fur? Absolutely. Why? Because for as many electrons that the rod gained is exactly as many electrons that the fur lost. That's what we call the conservation of charge. Good energy. Mm-hmm.